I must warn you that what you find here will be a big change from whatever it is you're accustomed to. Our patients are not well-to-do people. Their physical problems usually are the result of years of inadequate treatment or inadequate diet or both. Oh, that's so sad. But I, I tell you, I, I, I have a, a yearning to be part of the real world and to gain your perspective. Perspective? Good, good. Once I see a need, I always respond to it. I'll tell you something, you know, wealth, great wealth, is, uh, well, it's, it's lovely to have, but it, there is a responsibility to it. And I would like to make a contribution to my community. I, I don't mean just writing a check, it's too easy. I'm talking about something much more important, about giving my energy, my time, myself. Now, of course, a personal commitment is always more meaningful. Mm. You don't think it's too late for me? Oh, oh no, no, not at all, Gwen. Uh, good. Hello, darling. Hi, I'm Sorry hi. I'm late. I was held up. That's all right, sweetheart. Well, hello, Anna. How are you? Nice to see you again. Thank you, Gwen. I didn't mean to interrupt. It was too late for what? Oh, I, I was just talking about my commitment to society. Oh. Well, I'll be happy to explain our filing system to you. <laughs> An excellent idea, Anna. <laughs> okay, uh -huh. very simple. All of our patients are listed alphabetically, Gwen. It's kind of crowded in there. We meant to get computerized, but we just haven't gotten around to it yet. <clears throat> Which folder is the patient? I am so glad that you approve of my idea. Very good idea, Joy. Thank you. I, I think so, too. Well, good evening. Good night, Dorian. Good night. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Bye. You notice the wheels never stop turning in that head. <laughs> Three hearts, just a moment. There's something I have to talk to you about. Edwina, hey, this is very sweet of you to bring me a New Year's gift. I don't believe it. <laughs> Mickey Mantle. Phil Rizzuto and Yogi Berra. Where on earth did you get all these old cards? You know where these cards come from. They come with a bubble gum that I was always bugging you to buy me. Uh, and and you, you kept them all these years? No, no. I, I went through a phase where I threw out everything that reminded me of Cedar Falls, Iowa, and Ma and Pa Lewis. No, I, um, I talked the uh, cartoonists at the Chronicle into giving them to me. Uh, you know, I should have kept those ones that you gave me. They're collector's items now. Yeah, I noticed these are all Yankees. What did you expect? Right. <laughs> now, I remember how disappointed you were if I gave you a Duke Snyder or some other Dodger, and heaven forbid that I should give you a Pittsburgh Pirate. Oh, right, because they were losing then. You always taught me to respect winners. Well, sometimes it's how you play the game that counts. Oh, one of Paul Lewis's favorite homilies. I remember. <laughs> you remember how Dwight always used to mimic Paul Lewis's sayings at the dinner table? And Ma Lewis would always say, now what? Yes, I do. Edwina, I'm sorry, I... I just don't feel like reminiscing this evening. But I promise you, I am keeping your job application in mind. I don't know why I came here today. I, I came because I, I get lonely at the holidays. I mean, I realize that we haven't been very close since you ran away from the Lewises, but I mean, you're family to me. Or as close to family as I'm ever gonna get. Oh, I'm sorry, Peaches, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. The holiday's difficult for me, too. I just try to push away anything that smacks of sentimentality. Yeah, I understand that. Thanks. Adam, do you ever wonder who your real parents were and if they're still alive? Yeah, of course I do, but it doesn't do any good to wonder. We'll never know, will we? No, I guess not. I want to tell you, you know, you really did make a big difference in my life. I'm just sorry you didn't hang around longer. Ah. Hello, Adam. Hello, Pat. Hello, Pat. You know, I really have to be going. Um, I have a very early deadline to meet him tomorrow, and I haven't even begun the article. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. I, uh... I hope you like the baseball kind. I did throw in one Dodger, Gil Hodges, because he's 
I knew he was your all-time favorite first baseman. Oh, no, that's right. <laughs> you take care, teacher. You surprised him here. Yes, I am. In truth, I'm kind of surprised myself. And I am very happy to see you. I'm glad. Well, you know, I guess like most romantics, I had this fantasy of what I thought or how I thought things should be between lovers. And it hasn't worked out that way for you, has it? No, no, not exactly. But then I thought about it all afternoon, and the only perfect relationship that I could come up with was Romeo and Juliet. Well, they had their share of misunderstandings, too. Yeah. Anyway, I wanted you to know that the reason why I let you leave earlier today was... Well, for the first time, I was trying to let my head rule my heart. Oh, Pat, I, I, I don't blame you. I really don't. Wait a minute, I... Wait a minute please. Um, you see, I've had second thoughts, or maybe third thoughts, or whatever, but... I've decided that even if I do get hurt, I am. Because I'm going to be hurting a lot more if I let you out of my life. I've never said that to any woman before. Well, I, I want to be everything in the world to you. And I'm going to accept what we have together. Because all we do have is a lot more than most. Sweetheart, you, 
You know the uh, threatening notes that, that Tina got, the ones that told her to go back to California? Yes. Well, there have, there have been more of those notes. Why wasn't I told? Why, when I showed you the first two, you got very upset. Well, darling, initially I was upset, of course, because it reminded me of that awful period of my life. Let's, see, that's why I, I told Tina not, not to tell you. See, yeah. Sweetheart, that was wrong. You should have told me. She needs to be protected. Okay, I'm... This is, this is going to be extremely painful for you. But we're going to make it through this, you know? Trust me. But most of all, you must have faith in yourself. One of the notes that Tina got recently was... was signed in. The last note she got was... signed Nick. Honey, there have been other signs that Ricky Smith has returned. Please. Letting go 
got a telephone call from the phone company. Nicky Smith used him as a credit reference. Go on. Vinny and I checked out Nicky Smith's hotel room. We found the blonde wig that closed the, 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 the landlady's description. Everything, everything fits. Nicky Smith has been seen in Ernie's bar. They, Hey, the notes to Tina are the, the most important indication. Do you think I wrote them? No, no, honey, no, not you. Nikki Smith. Darling, I have no hostile feelings for Tina, repressed or otherwise. I love that child. I know, I know you love her. Isn't it possible that her presence <laughs> triggered feelings that, that we thought were long gone, but the more I discussed it with, with Will, Will Vernon, he said that's a possibility. You talked it over with Will Vernon and not with me! Oh, Joe, how could you? Who else are you disgusted with? Oh, my God, Tina! You told Tina! That's why she's so afraid of me! That's why she was gonna run away with Marco Dane. Oh, Joe, and at all this time you never once came to me, you never confronted me, you never gave me a chance to defend myself. I don't need to confront you until... Until what? Until you were sure? Is that right? I yeah, I wanted to protect you. Then why are you telling me now? Because I had no more other choice. Why? The police discovered that the murder weapon was pawned. Pawned under the name of Nikki Smith. The police think that Nikki Smith murdered Marco Dane. Oh, 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 oh,